My friends, it was nearly seven years ago when, as I began my ministry as bishop here, I had the opportunity to offer my installation homily. And you may recall that I spoke of the need of building bridges, that is, to be living stones in a bridge that Christ wants us to build to our neighbors, to those in need to whomever is before us, to be the messengers of glad tidings and new life and healing in his name. But I think it's safe to say that none of us ever imagined that day that you and I would face such an enormous challenge, a time of tremendous suffering and fear as we do now, as we face this pandemic together, a pandemic that has upended all of our lives. Allow me to begin by thanking you, all of you, for all that you have done to help, as the experts say, flatten the curve and to allow this pandemic's reach to be mitigated. We in the church, as you know, have tried to do our part as well. But we still hear these terrible numbers of those who are sickened and those who have succumbed to the virus. And yet when I hear these numbers, as much as they sadden my heart, I also need to remind myself that behind those numbers are real people with real faces and families and stories that need to be honored and remembered and become a clarion call for us to act I think of those who lost loved ones and are grieving alone, many of whom could not even bury their mom or their dad or their brother or sister or even worse, one of their children. I must confess, my friends, in my own eye, the future has never appeared to be more uncertain. But what is certain is that the aftermath of this pandemic, long after this virus has been tamed and, please God, eliminated, that we will be spending many years together trying to help our sisters and brothers who are in need for the first time or remain in need. So I come to you in this hour of our common emergency to relaunch the annual Catholic Appeal and to ask your help to allow the mission of the Church to endure because it is needed now more than ever. As you know, each year I ask you for help so that the mission to the sick and to the poor and to the hungry can be maintained. Now, my friends, I come to you recognizing that there are many more who need our help. And so I ask all of us to join together in solidarity. You have often heard me say we are a family of faith, and we are, to come together in solidarity so that if you are in need, the church, which means you and me, will be there to be of help to you. These past few weeks, have you and I not seen what true heroism means? Consider the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare providers. They courageously leave their homes to care for the sick and the suffering. They are on the front lines of the messengers of hope. Even consider the attendants at our grocery stores or gas stations who are there because they make sure we have the necessities of life. They are the unsung and oftentimes unappreciated heroes and heroines in our midst. I think of our Catholic school teachers 
who serve our children and young people on the front lines of allowing our children to continue to learn in the safety of their homes, oftentimes accepting an additional burden of work. I've often asked you for sacrificial giving. My friends, allow me, forgive me, for asking for heroic giving in this hour of need. To go where there is sickness, where there's even despair, to bring healing and hope. I want to thank you, as I always do, for your extraordinary generosity and all that you have helped the church to do all these years. And I come here to ask your help again in this unique moment of urgent need. Please give as much as you can so that our sisters and brothers can be cared for. And I promise you my prayers for you, for your families, for the people of our diocese, for all the people of Fairfield County. Jesus, you're my hope and My friends, you and I, as believers in the risen Lord, know that this crisis will pass. And we will be together again as family, as neighbors, as sisters and brothers who worship the Lord Jesus. For it is not easy to be alone. But we're never, ever alone. For Christ is always with us, guiding us, uniting us in spirit and protecting us. And when we are together again, let us not leave anyone behind, but let us use this moment to have the resources to let them know that they are not forgotten, that they will be served, and that they are loved by you and me.